Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to review the Stratton Speciale watch. And this is the watch from the real production, not the, the, uh, the mock-up samples and the internet pictures. So let's dive in and have a look. This is, um, as mentioned, this is the, the first production of the uh, Speciale watch. And I had, when I bought this, I had two fears. Let's talk about the first one. I had the fear that these very, very nice pictures here, that got me hooked and that's why I bought it. I was fearing that, you know, you can make anything look good in pictures. Um, so I was fearing that the real production wouldn't live up to that. Then I saw some reviews where different YouTubers have reviewed the, uh, the watch and they reviewed a mock-up sample or you know the first production run not really the production but the first mock-ups and still i'm hesitant to believe in it but now i have it and this is the first real production for regular customers like me so it's just i mean gorgeous watch wow it is really really nice and so my fears were totally, you know, not necessary. The, uh, the watch is everything I hoped it would be. Um, I feared a lot of things, uh, but you know, none of it came through. So let's do a full review of the actual piece here. And I think first off the bat, this is a tremendous watch. This is really a step up. Are there a few nickels and moans? Yes, there are, but that's common for all watches. So I will go through the very few things I have that's not good, but you know, all in all, just look at it. It's, I mean, it's a marvelous watch. Of course, you have to be into 70s watches. You have to be into chrono uh, watches, chronographs. I mean, that goes without saying. If you are into th super thin Nomos watches, I have that too. If you're into that, well, then this is not for you, but just look at it. It's just gorgeous. So let's just dive in. Um, I, as always, I use my uh, little um, thing here um, to uh, sort of just organize my thoughts. The first one is brand. And I mean, as you can see, Stratton watch, no one, very few people outside watches know this brand. So it's not, you don't get any plus points for that. Uh, but people within the watch community have known Stratton for a few years. They've done quite a few watches that are now that, that are really nice. And, and um, so people within the, the industry know them now. So, um, I mean, it's just, it's not just the first watch coming online, you know. Um, and actually I do have one of their, last year I bought this one, which is also a Stratton. In this case, I bought the, um, the Mecha Quartz. Um, and this is um, a really nice watch. I, it's a fun watch. Uh, also very, you know, summery. You can see the blue here. Um, so it's, it's a really nice, uh, playful thing and, and really well executed. I really like it. It's a bit tall, but that's, uh, you know, it's very light because it's a Mecha Quartz. So I really like it. I found I used it quite a bit more than I thought I would. So this is also from Stratton. I bought that probably a year ago or more than that. Um, so really nice watch. So they have proven themselves that they can produce or um, they can produce watches. So apart from that, um, the, uh, the size here, that's the first thing I look for. That's the first main thing I'm looking for in a watch. And let's just go through and measure it because whatever they write on the website, you know, it's never completely true. I don't know why. I've never found a watch that really uh, fulfills the, the measurements. So let's take the case size here. Um, it says 42 on the website. And you can see here it's, yeah, it's 42, 49, 41.9. 41.8 when I measured. So basically that's that's in the territory. I like smaller watches. My ideal size is 39 
um, plus minus, you know, but so 42 would always make me hesitate and say, ah, oh, you know, mm, bummer, it's too big. But it's a square watch. So it doesn't have those really long lock, locks. So when you measure it like this here, you can see it's 40.9. So that makes a huge difference because now you can wear it on the watch or on, on the wrist without it overhanging. So that's really, really nice. And then we got the thickness. This is a, a little bit of a bummer. This is bummer number one. There's two bummers. It's 16. On the website it says 14.9, uh, so basically 15 um, for, for the uh, automatic and, and two millimeters less for the Mecha Quartz. But that's not the case. It is 15. That's one of my big gripes. You can see it's, it's 16 here and not 15. Um, I guess if you and one of the reasons is you can see the the um, the, uh, the sapphire glass is protruding a little bit and of course I measure it with the uh, the glass with the sapphire um, and I guess if you measured with the just the edge here and not the sapphire you could get 40.9 I guess uh, but you know that's not how you we measure it and it's i've tried it it's really difficult to do that uh, because yeah so basically it's it's 16 and 16 is the same as this one so it's quite big so what can we say about that well it it's um it has a um, 7750 movement and you can't get away from the fact that that just requires some, some depth and you know, that's how it is. Um, but what I've been doing is, I've been, that's my fear number two. So fear number one was that it wouldn't live up to quality when I look at it. And totally blows me away. The quality is so nice. Fear number two, I knew well ahead of time that 15 millimeters and I feared more than that, 16 now, that, that that would be too much. That was my fear. And I, I know by, that's why I take this size as my, my biggest thing I, I search for first. I know if it's too big, either lock to lock or the thickness, I can't wear it and I don't wear it. So I was very, very um, scared about that. Um, so. The good thing is I've tried it on, I've lived with it for a week now and I really enjoy it. So let me try to put it on the wrist here. And what I found is it is super comfortable and it's super nice and it doesn't wobble. That's my fear. My fear was it's so high, so thick that it would wobble every time I've moved my hand it would wobble and there's absolutely no wobble at all. I can't really guess why. Uh, of course, you need to have it. If you're one of those guys that, then, that needs a, you know, a metal bracelet and it's kind of loose, of course, that doesn't go with, with a heavy chronograph. Uh, I like leather and I like uh, have it a little bit tight. And with, with that setting, it's perfectly fine. And I really, that is one of my main gripes because I'm truly honest there. If it's too big, too heavy or too top heavy, I simply cannot wear it. Um, but in this case, wow, no problems at all. I've been using it every day and it's so nice. No problems whatsoever, but it is thick. So just look at my, I just go a little bit out here. If you see, it's a little bit thick, but it has a lot of wrist, wrist presence. So. But if you do the Mecha Quartz, you can go two millimeters less. So that is one big thing here. Um, but it's a gorgeous watch. Um, and that's, that's, there's no denying it. I really like that. The next thing we will look at is the design. And this goes to the heart of, of everything with watches, I think. 
the design is uh, this is quite unique I mean a lot of watches are nice they're good but uh, let me try to focus a little bit here this is absolutely wonderful um, it is of course um, the case is one of the unique things it's a racing 70s racing inspired and I was thinking about this kind of square watch of course, of course square watches are, are done before um, but it's, it's quite unique case this case I haven't seen before and um, I really um, I've been struggling to find something that looks like it and of course it's not a first one uh, but as you can see as there's a Seiko there's a Seiko over here that's also square but not in the same way uh, it, there's another Seiko here, also a little bit square and also with rounded corners. Um, and a Seiko here as well. Uh, maybe this one is getting closer because um, here you have, you know, the sides here, the depth is more or less the same. Um, so the, the Hoyer is somewhat, but then you can see the, the sides are like, um, straight and not curved um, and there's another one here but but again the sides are straight and of course there's a rounded corners like here but what I'm trying to get at is is basically this is a, a very very unique case design and I won't say that it's the first because I've been work, working with design for a long time and there's nothing ever basically the first ever being done but this is like not something I've seen this case design is out of this world special uh, maybe it's done before but I haven't seen it and now it's available and that's that's really I really like that so freaking nice and of course it, it harkens to the car design and 70s style and racing chronograph and it's it's just um, it's just really nice um, I've been hearing uh, someone people some people say oh this is like a TV or it's like um, you know it's it's a uh, I was thinking what can we call it you can see this is like a TV and we've got the same proportions here like a 70s tv uh so that's not too way off that's quite nice um so you could call it a tv style watch uh, if you would like uh, but i found something else um i am calling personally i like it when when watches are being called something um so that uh, the company doesn't call it that uh, stratton is calling this the speciale but every good watch gets a nickname from the customers, and uh, like you know, all the Seikos, someone is somewhere called Tuna and Samurai and all kinds of things. So I really like those nicknames. Uh, you could call this the TV, but I call it the stadium. For me, this is like a stadium. Uh, it got the same dimensions, just like this one here. You can see. You have the same all the seats here uh, is the depth of the watch and then you got the playing field down here and that playing field is the dial of the watch so for me i call this in my own words a uh, stadium so this is the stratton stadium and what you can see in this game here we actually have a little bit different this this game here consist of not two goals there's not a, a, a home team and the away team two two goals no there's a third one here so it's a little bit of a special game so let's go into the dial of this piece here um, of course you can get it in different colors um, this one is black uh, with a black background uh, but you can get it in other colors you can see that on the website uh, what I really find striking here but look at those I've just tried to zoom in here look at those sub dials they are applied on top of the surface 
So they're protruding out. It's it's like a miniature ceramic uh, thing on top of the dial. Um, I haven't seen that before. A lot of watches have, you know, just straight, just like, for example, this one is also from Stratton, just flat, uh, flat subdials like this. Uh, most most uh, watches have this, and and that's perfectly fine. But I, I was really intrigued by this, where you can get something applied with this kind of precision, and such a you know nice creamy thing uh, placed on top. Um, so I I really I'm flabbergasted about that. That's really nice. Um, and then you got the uh, our hands. Um, um, they they're really nice, but you can see there's a tip on the end, an orange tip, so it makes it actually a little bit legible. And then you got the uh, day date, um, which is has a nice frame around it. I mean everything is done so impeccably well. I was trying actually to look. Uh, you can see there's this is an IWC I can find a few watches that has something uh, applied like subdials applied but I haven't really seen a lot this is one of the few ones I've seen um, of course they're out there but uh, with this kind of material and I don't I'm not even even sure this this um, subdials what, what kind of material that creamy white thing is uh, ceramic or whatever but it really makes a contrast here. So, um, and the hour markings are, you know, applied again. So again, applied and not just printed on it. Um, and it's the, uh, you got, it has a little bit of difficulty focusing here. Um, and you got a tachymeter scale and everything. I mean, it's just a gorgeous style. So, that's one of the, the star of the show here. So should I now bring my second part up that um, my second part that I, I have a little bit of a problem with it's it's the orange colors. I really love orange colors and you know I, I'm a sucker for orange and it's so so nice. But um, probably there's a little bit too much here, especially when you do a close up like this one. I mean, you have the chronograph second hand here. Usually you get that chronograph second hand as an orange. That's perfect. Now uh, Stratton has done the tips of the hour and minute hand. They've done that in orange as well. And I haven't seen that before. Also a new thing. They've done a lot of new things for me. Um, of course you can find other examples, but I haven't seen it. Um, I was a little bit, mm, what about that? But actually I found that it's, it works nicely because it makes it more easy for me to see. You know, at a quick second I can see where the, the hands are. So I like that in orange as well. Then you got the three subdials, which are also in orange. And you could say, well, that's that's okay too. I mean, subdials are usually in, in in another color. So, but then you got at all the the hours here. It's you have an orange dot. So at some point it gets too much. I mean, there's there's too much orange color, and, and this is coming from a guy that really loves that '70s wipe of orange color. So. Uh, probably a little bit too much so that's my only gripe you could have changed something maybe uh, the dots here on, on all the uh, markings here maybe that could be some other color or maybe the three sub dials I'm not quite sure where to change it but probably a little bit too much uh, right now personally I would probably do the hour markings that orange pip at the at the end you probably don't need that. Um, you, you could do without just make it creamy color or something. Um, so, so probably that's the only gripe I have. And regarding the strap, of course, uh, you realize this strap is something I, my own personal strap. Um, these are the ones supplied by Stratton. Um, 
really nice straps actually and racing straps um, so if I just put them on top here you can probably see like this of course it works really nice um, you know the black color of the leather matches the black dial the orange uh, stitching matches the orange so it's a killer combination here but um, again for my taste it's probably a little bit too safe um, I wouldn't I mean you can easily wear it it's very very nice it, it goes together I mean, I mean but it's probably a little bit too easy for me um, and with all the orange going on already too much and then having these stitchings as well um, probably ends up making this um, too much so what I've done personally but that's a personal choice um, I've I've taken a, 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 a leather strap that's different color because that way the um, the uh, cream stitching here matches the cream here on the rim and the subtitles and that emphasize instead of emphasizing the black and the orange it emphasizes the cream so you see it's like the, the um the base leather color and the cream and the cream here and the cream subtitles that reduces the black to sort of a background color so the black is just a background color and the orange is just popping um, but the rest of the watch is is uh, you know a stainless steel case and cream so I mean that's that's what I, I like but I, I can switch back and forth different straps and, and but I just I feel that works for me so uh, and of course it's as you you can see it's a uh, it's a 22 22 millimeter strap and that's that's what you need for the case width of 42 you need um, a 22 uh, so 20 would have been too small so I um, that's the right choice so with the dial here which is exceptionally nice I mean even the small S for Stratton or Special I don't know which but the, the, the Stratton logo the applied markings wonderful hands wonderful color the tachymeter and the day date um, everything is so nice um, and then the case itself well of course you got the two pushes here and then you got the crown which i'm really in love with the crown um of course it got the the stratton logo again here which is nice uh really nice but look at that that screw screw uh, spiral screws here this is wow this is so nice and it's it's a joy that's because of the value uh, but it's a joy to operate but um, this way of making this spiral pattern here it you know I haven't seen again something I haven't seen I've seen a lot of watches but of course it's been made before somewhere someone can always find something been made before but you can see they're now putting so many things together Stratton is putting so many things together that you know I haven't really seen so like this spiral pattern so gorgeous um, I really like that and you know this this applied subtitles I haven't really seen before and the case you know the case uh, design with the with the curves and the depth and you know wow so many good things together and on the back side you got that um, so it, Again, racing inspired, really nice, great thing here. So, all in all, that's it's just a killer combination. I haven't seen a watch like this. That's that's the amazing part of it. The um, the polishing, uh, I mean, it's in, it's impeccable. Um, it's really nice, and I've heard that it is uh, coated, so it's it's stainless steel and it's 
coat it with something that's going to make it more scratch resistant. If I try to zoom in, you're going to see it's all, almost, I mean, it's really like a mirror. Um, it's really nice. It must be polished, but, um, you know, I, I sort of get the, my first thought, oh, maybe that's chromed. Um, and then with a layer on top, I don't know. In any case, it's, it's really nice. So now let's get to the next part of the puzzle here. The price. Well, it is uh, with the Mega Quartz, it's five hundred dollars, which is, um, I would say, as a Kickstarter, that's that's a price many people recognize as a very good Kickstarter price. But it's for Mega Quartz. If you choose um, the value seven seven fifty, which I have here, then it's a, um, a twelve hundred dollars. And I would say, I mean, that's, uh, it's not cheap by no means, it's no cheap. But I just think that a design like this deserves it. And with a value due, I mean, 7750, they can cost anything from, you know, a thousand dollars up to like an IWC to 10,000. So it's, it's, that's a good price. I mean, getting a value for 1200, um, Maybe it's not the cheapest you can find, but it's certainly a very good price. Uh, and if you think it's too much, well, you've got the option, just pay 500, which is wonderful. I really like the strategy is doing this. You have those options here. So um, the movement, of course, um, with the value of 7750, you know what you're getting. Uh, this is a true, uh, tried and true workhorse. Uh, you get a very, very nice, reliable workhorse. And you also get a few drawbacks. I mean, one of them is you need uh, like 16 millimeters here, or 15, depending on whether without uh, sapphire. Um, so you get uh, a little bit thick and you can get that tiny bit of wobble from time to time. Uh, so there's a few niggles with the, with the 7750 that everyone knows, uh, but it's, it's a darling workhorse and I really like it. I think personally that this, such a nice design like this, um, that really required a automatic. Um, for example, when I bought this one, I, I took the uh, Mecha Quartz version and I really enjoy it. That's nice. But I think with a special design like this, it really uh, it really shouts out to get a, a an automatic movement. And that could have been something else than value, but but my I think the value fits the time era of the 70s that this watch is trying to emulate. Uh, the, if you want the uh, Mecha Quartz, uh, you have all the advantages, I would say. It's only hopeless nostalgics like me that would take a value, um, an automatic, uh, because there's a lot of drawdowns. Uh, if you take the Mecha Quartz, uh, I can certainly back that up because, first of all, you get uh, two millimeters less thickness so that's that's a very big bonus uh, you get more reliable move uh, reliable in, in terms of, of timing and you save uh, f uh, you know you pay 500 instead of instead of 1200 I mean come on you, you only get good things out of out of it so the, I would say the mega quartz is a very very good option um, and for nostalgics like me I'm just happy thank you Stratton for having the option to do the, uh, the automatic uh, as well. So the next thing is uh, complications. And of course, with the complications here, um, it's very clear day and date. Uh, you only get that with the value. You don't get that with the mega quartz. And then the, uh, the normal um, 7750 uh, chronograph and I don't need to go into detail with how that functions because everyone knows that so I don't need to point out every sub dial what it does it's fairly straightforward it has that reliable uh, you know the pushing and 
how it works, you know, start, stop and reset. Um, everyone knows how to function, so I don't need to go through that. It's just nice and reliable. The final thing here, the X factor. Does it work? X factor means we've now put a lot of things together. And sometimes you can fuse things together, uh, you know, in like in a blender. You can put things together that works and you can put things together that does not work. In this case, um, they've made, Stratton have made, or Kyle have made a really uh, 70s inspired watch. And by the way, now that I'm looking at it from uh, this perspective here, you can see the uh, AR coating. Uh, another thing, I'm a sucker for AR coating uh, just on the underside. Uh, there's not, nothing on the, over, uh, on the top side. Um, but you can see when I zoom in how legible it is. You know, it's so clear and I really like AR coating. So, so thank you for that, that's really nice. But getting back to the X Factor, a 70s racing Mustang, you know, racing car uh, inspiration here with a very, very unique case, truly unique case. And with a depth here, I really like that depth from, from, from the sapphire down to the dial. A lot of depth, you, you really get some panorama views here. And then with a unique crown that is um, let me screw it in here with with a, uh, a spiral pattern here and you've got the um, a black background and orange pops uh, you know i think there's so many things here that are really uh, you know groundbreaking and unique and that's why i wanted an automatic inside of this this is a watch you haven't seen before I don't know how Kyle came up with this. Um, I'll venture to say this is one of the watches that Kyle is going to be remembered for, uh, in my view. You, he has made all the other watches he's made are great, great design. There's a difference between um, great and you know truly unique, and you know, and that's what he's done here. That's it's just it's just a joy. So thank you for that. And this was the, uh, the, the run through of all the design elements here. So uh, stay tuned and I'll see you again next time.